All right, let's give another round of applause here, Assistant Superintendent Jane Miller. All right, welcome to the new school year, 2016-17. It's great to see all your smiling faces back, excited. I can feel the energy in the room. I hope that everyone had a restful summer. I hope that you got time with family. I hope that you were able to take some downtime and relax over the summer. I hope that you're excited to be back, that you're rested, and you're ready to enter into another school year. First of all, um, I know the C notes stepped out, but that was an amazing performance. Let's uh, give the C notes another round. Of Next, I feel really appreciative of our school board and the work that they do. Uh, they've been working hard all summer. When I started July 1, they've been uh, looking at policies, discussing policies, reviewing things to make our district the best place it could be. So let's. And then next, if you were on an interest-based bargaining team, whether it was the teacher contract or the classified contract, for those people, please stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. So that team, they took on the tough work of working as a highly effective PLC. They identified problems, they brought in data, they had collaborative conversations around the data, and they came up with solutions. Solutions that lead us to finalizing our contract by the end of the school year. So that's amazing. Next, I don't know if many of you know, but we also in the district have a group of people who work to plan events and make sure that we are taking care of ourselves. And that group is our wellness committee. So let's give a round of applause to our wellness committee. Because as we know, in education, the word stressed is just desserts, spelled backwards. <laughs> and in education, when we get stressed, our staff lounges start to fill up with donuts and cookies and pies and cakes. But the Wellness Committee is going to show us another way, so look for those emails and take part in those events. So I want to start by saying it's an honor to serve in the community that I grew up in. For those of you that don't know, I grew up in a house that was about five blocks behind Cascade Athletic Club. It was in the Gresham Barlow attendance area, so I attended Gresham Barlow schools but I was always an East County kid. I remember riding my bike uh, through this community, the same community that me and Ernie Butenshin were knocking on doors and telling people why they should pass our bond. I remember going through those, uh, that on my bike and uh, talking to families and visiting friends. And I remember being with my dad in this community before a lot of the stores were here and watching those stores uh, come into existence and, and him uh, always being outgoing and talking to each and every person that uh, he ran into. And I remember that there was a handful of people of color in this community at that time. We were one of those families and we knew those families. Um, we knew him because of his collaborative approach. He was also an educator. Uh, he was a retired principal. My mom is a retired teacher, kindergartner, 30 years. <laughs> And when I got into education, I began as a first grade teacher in Martin Luther King Elementary in Portland Public Schools. I taught first for a while, taught second, I taught fifth. Eventually, I was a dean of students at a K-8 school. Yeah, those crazy K-8s. <laughs> and then um, after that, I had the opportunity to be the principal in Rainier, Oregon, a rural community, much different diversity population from what we are here in East County but I love serving in that role and capacity and meeting the families and connecting with those families over my seven years there in Rainier. Then when I had the opportunity to come back home and be a part of this district, I jumped at that opportunity. And when I first got the job, and I remember coming off the Gresham exit and driving back up 181st and just taking a look around at all the change that had happened since I was there as a kid and seeing so many faces of color off the max line and, and up 181st and in their cars. And I thought, this is an exciting time to be a part of this district. 
and we embrace that change, and we embrace the diversity, and we're excited about the diversity. But then we also reflect on it, and for some of those families, it's sad because they've been displaced from where they grew up, where their parents went to school in Northeast Portland, based on the economy. And so whenever there's displacement, there's also a little bit of frustration. There's a little bit of um, feeling like you're not connected. So as we move through the school year, something to think about is how do we take those families who have been displaced and let them know that they have a home here right away? So I want to ask you guys a question. How many of you have ever been entrusted to hold someone's newborn baby? Show of hands if you've ever held someone's newborn baby. How do you hold that baby? Do you hold them with care? Do you hold them gently? Do you hold them close? Do you support the back? Do you support the head? Do you make sure that no harm is ever going to come to that newborn baby? Well, think about that newborn baby that you held. But then fast forward six years ahead. Fast forward eight years ahead. Fast forward 10 years ahead. And that same newborn baby is a student in our district, in our school system, and maybe in your classroom. And what do the parents expect for their child? Those parents expect and trust and deserve that we're gonna hold their child with that same level of care that we held them with when they were newborn. So what do we want for our kids? In our district, many of you have seen our district goals. Some of you are new, maybe you've reviewed them online briefly. But these are our district goals. These are the things that drive us, and these are the things that we want for every single kid in our school system. So we wish for every kid that when they leave third grade, that they're gonna be academically on track in reading, writing, and math. And when they leave eighth grade, they'll be academically prepared to enter into ninth, ninth grade and be successful in ninth grade. And when they finish ninth grade, they have enough credits. So we know that when they get to 12th grade, they will be on track to graduate on time. And when they leave our system and graduate in 12th grade, that they are academically prepared to go to college and be successful in college, and that they're academically prepared to enter the workforce if that's what they choose to do, and that they have the skills to be successful in the workforce. So this summer, we had a conversation with our principals around these district goals, and then they created their goals. And their goals tie back to your school improvement plans, and it ties back to these district goals. And principals will be having conversations with you as you guys write your goals about how your goals will connect to what your school's focusing on and tie back to those district goals. And then teachers, it's important, the research tells us that it's important for students to write goals and for students to monitor themselves as they move through the standards and their goals for students should be tied to those standards and everything should tie back to our district goals, have some alignment. So these are our belief statements. These belief statements are things that I connected to when I was looking to apply in the district. I looked on the website and these belief statements align with my beliefs. So what have I learned about our district in working here over the years? These are some things that I've learned about Centennial. We promote collaboration. We're a hardworking, caring, committed group of educators. We work to get the right people on the bus and keep them on the bus. And overall, we see an upward trend in our data when we look at our achievement. We see an upward trend in attendance. We see an upward trend in academics. We see an upper trend in reading, writing, and math. And we've also taken on a coaching model in the way that we evaluate, support, and improve instruction. So give yourselves a round of applause for that. So what are our brutal facts? Yes, I said brutal. Our brutal facts is the elephant in the room that we get a little uncomfortable talking about. Our brutal facts are the disparities that we see within our data. We still see a gap in achievement between our general population and our students with disabilities. 
and we still see a gap in our achievement between our general population and our students of color. And in this district, we're charged with identifying and implementing practices that lead to equitable outcomes. But we can't do it alone. Look at the person next to you and tell them, I can't do it alone. So I've always been a big fan of boxing. And one of the greatest of all times to me is Muhammad Ali. And when Muhammad Ali had a fight with Joe Frazier and he won by knockout, the thrill in Manila, which was held in Asia. Afterwards, after his fight, he was excited. And he was ready to get on his plane and fly home. And when he got on the plane, he took a seat in first class. And the stewardess started at the back of the plane. And she began to walk around and check seat belts. And when she got up to first class and she got to the champ seat, she said, Sir, I'm going to need you to buckle your seat belt. And Muhammad Ali responded with, Superman don't need no seat belt. <laughs> and she said, Superman don't need no plane either. <laughs> and the champ buckled his belt. Because he knew that he wasn't getting home without that pilot or that stewardess. And we know that we're not going to close this gap without that counselor and that secretary and that custodian and that peer teacher and that principal and that district office employee. Yeah, them too. <laughs> so what we're asking of schools this year is to work on two things. First, we want every school to look at their behavior support system. And we want you to have collaborative conversations with your team and refine that behavior support system. We want to make sure that every single school in the district, no matter what school it is, is supporting students and teachers and staff to the best of our ability, creating a healthy school culture. If we were able to do that, there wouldn't be a need for the transfer process because every single parent would be satisfied at every single school. The next thing we want schools to do is Make sure you have an equity team. Some schools already have it in place. If you don't have an equity team, you gotta get one in place this year. Each equity team is gonna take an equity audit, and from that, they're gonna come up with some action steps that push their SIP forward. And it's also gonna keep equity as a focus in front of us. So as I come to a close, I would like to challenge each and every one of you to set a strong foundation for the school year. Set high expectations for the kids. Get to know the kids and what the current reality is for that classroom. And then once you know the current reality in the next few weeks, make a mental date, uh, take a mental date of that reality. What day is it? And this is what my current reality is. Then look at the calendar and look way down at the end of the school year and put a date there for your desired reality. This is where we want our kids to go. This is what we want them to get to. And when we think about our current reality and our desired reality, then also find out what the barriers and pitfalls and obstacles will be that are blocking you from getting to that desired reality. And then remember that you can't do it alone. Collaborate with your colleagues and figure out how we're gonna deal with these obstacles and these pitfalls and these barriers so we can get each and every one of our kids from their current reality to our desired reality. So here we have a picture of an iceberg. When we look at an iceberg, what we see is what's above the surface. Unfortunately, on this side, we also see under the surface. But we see what's above the surface. And then under the surface, it can be huge. We don't know what's under the surface. And what this reminds me of is the way we should think about students when they walk into our door. When students walk in, what we see is what's above the surface. We see their appearance. Are they happy? Do they have a smile on their face? Are they excited? Do they have their backpack and homework and they're ready to go? Are they well-groomed? Are they not well-groomed? Do they look hungry? But what we don't know is what's under the surface. And what could be under that surface? Under that surface, there could be poverty, there could be homelessness, 
There could be hunger. There could be abuse. There could be someone worried about being bullied. There could be not knowing where you're going to sleep at night. There could be a relative just passed away. But we don't know what's under the surface unless kids tell us what's under the surface. And what would make a kid tell us what's under the surface? Relationships. Building trusting relationships where students know that they can open up to someone, a caring adult, who is going to help them meet those needs that are under the surface. So I ask each and every one of you this year to be intentional. Be intentional about building relationships with students. Be intentional about building relationships with parents. Be intentional about building relationships with our community partners. Be intentional about building relationships with colleagues. Be intentional about building relationships with your principal. Be intentional about building relationships with our district office. Yeah, them too. <laughs> so I could talk to you all day about our current reality and our desired reality. But what I'd like to do is, I, I touched on data just a little bit. Our upward trend and our gap in achievement. And for me, that's our current reality. And our desired, my desired reality for our district is to continue that upward trend and to reduce and eliminate that gap. And my desired reality is that we can be the best district in the state. We are one of the top districts in the state and we can be the best district in the state. And I believe in each and every one of you. And I believe that this is the team and this is the room of educators that can close that achievement gap for each and every one of our kids. Because this is a race against time for our kids. It's not a competition between schools. It's a race against time for our kids. And this is the room that can do it. And I thank you guys for being here with us. And we're gonna have a great school year. Thank you.